The fourth area is to reform the healthcare system, what I feel is probably the most important. Like pension systems, most health systems in the world are designed when life expectancy were much lower. This system is focused on hospital care, which is the most costly part of the whole healthcare ecosystem. But so long as the population is young, the system works fine. But as life expectancy rose, so did the disease burden. The old design starts to break down. It is like you have been training very hard for a sprint, and then you realize your race is a marathon. The situation is also like an overflowing kitchen sink. We can keep mopping and soaking up the water on the floor, but the work is endless, and the effort increasingly trying. At some point, we need to figure out how to turn down the tap. In healthcare, this means slowing down the onset of severe diseases and make people healthier. If this cannot be done, the sheer disease burden driven by aging will overload the healthcare system. Worse, it can cripple the finances of governments. Hence, building on the foundation established over many years, we developed Healthier SG, our preventive care strategy, which we were launched in July this year. Healthier SG delivers preventive care by building up primary care, family physicians in community and polyclinics, and it becomes the foundational level of healthcare. But at this level, family physicians in primary care they cannot work alone. For the minority of more serious cases, they need to escalate the care upwards to secondary and tertiary care in our hospitals. But then the great majority of less serious cases or even healthy residents, they need to devolve, devolve the care downwards to community care, to family care. The communities we live in, the families we hold dear to, are places that create and sustain health. Studies show that 60% of health is determined by social factors within communities and families. It is about having a good family environment, hygienic living conditions, nutritious food, education for children, good employment opportunities, public amenities like parks, libraries, and sports facilities. And where health interventions are needed, they are more social than medical and often verge on common sense. Sleep well, eat well, reward, have rewarding relationships, exercise, don't smoke, undergo periodic health screening and vaccinations. However, it is the commonsensical easy things that always get put off because there are no immediate consequences and therefore they fall, they fell prey to inertia. Community support, can help us overcome those inertia. In particular, with community support, there are great opportunities for seniors to age healthily in communities. And this is the next area where big changes need to take place. Hence, beyond Healthier SG, the next area of priority for MOH is to build up community care, to get us all to do what is right for our health, to support aging in communities, and I'm glad quite a number of members have spoken about this. It will be a continuation of Healthier SG, and as a national program, as ambitious and as extensive as Healthier SG. Forward Singapore has been described as a refresh of our social compact. The social compact is usually understood as an unwritten contract between the individual and the state, the responsibility of the individual to contribute to the larger good and the obligation of the state to provide assurances and opportunities to its citizens. So under Healthier SG, how does this concept apply? The government will provide the support and structure for individuals to take care of their own health. But then beyond the relationship between individual and the state, the community is at the core of the healthcare social compact.